everyone is doing well and is um, having fun with tarot. Um, this is the latest deck from uh, Resentimento uh, Italian Art, essentially uh, Giordano Berti's um, cards he runs. So this is the art edition of the uh, Toroki uh, Doti Tarot from 1862, and it's in the, the book edition. It's smaller than some of the others. Um, I did notice this time, um, usually there are stickers. This is actually on the paper. So that's a bit different. And there's a catalog now, which is usually something like a catalog in there. Then we have the Milanese Tarot. Oh. Talks about the different tarot, which is going through some of the basics written by Bertie. Here's a note to me from Bertie. I will not read it to you. Um, and then the box is lined in like a sort of a sort of velveteen with a tie ribbon. And then you get the sort of yellowish gold pouch. And here are the cards. So the cards are fairly small. This is 94 of 900. San Berti. And let's see. Make it in one of my RWS. So there's the size difference in them. They're smaller. So this is a little title card, copyright 2021. The back has, um, looks like two women on the back. This is Milano. These are rounded on the edges, so I'll put that there. And they're ex they're actually fairly light. There's the thickness of the deck. And let's look at them. Let's actually make it. I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit. Let's go through it. So someone had asked, um, uh, comparing the Perrin Tarot with this, which is 1865, and this one is 1862. So let's look at the difference. So we'll see. Um, this is also a Sentimento Berti deck. So completely different. Here's the Fool and the oh, well there's the the bagatelle the gato and then la papesa so they are fairly different um for me the parent is a little rougher it reminds me of like really poorly printed mexican newspaper posters you know what i'm talking about they're just really low quality, sort of um, really kind of odd. And it looks almost like it's, the, the ink is like not quite lining up every time. So let's look at, let's look at the full first. I always like to look at the full first. So the the actual quality of these cards is um, actually uh, better than I expected. They're beautiful. The colors, the lines, these are very refined, beautifully done. He has a little peel on his shirt. The dog, the cap. We have the very stern looking, he looks like, actually he looks like a cobbler with that shoe thing there. 
um, cobbler, shoemaker, la papesa. Kind of a strange face. This one has writing on it. It says il presente se something sotto la something della leggi. L e g g i leggi leggi leggi. The shield is blank. Pinks, reds, greens. Very nice. Look at that nose on that guy. Very refined deck, almost soprofino. We have four people underneath the Il Papa, giving his blessing. Gliamanti. These are very small tableaus to fill. I mean, they're very tiny. What is that? Like two and a half inches? Here's a, this horse almost looks like a unicorn with that spear there, canopied. Nicaro. La Justizia. Very fine details. Very lovely. Armetta. Now, I actually used to have the Il Meningello Doti, which was actually in like a like a cardboard uh, booklet with two black ribbons. And I sold it. I got rid of it. Um, I just didn't, wasn't really into Marseille style decks. Here's the Wheel of Fortune. And I, I don't know, I just got rid of it. And it's, I should not have done that. I really shouldn't have. Another one of those, I regret getting rid of this deck, just like the uh, Victoria Regina tarot. So there's Forza, La Peso. The look on his face is one of like, he looks very tired. Look at the shading, the beautiful shading there. Colors are really nice. La Morte, it's actually titled. His face looks human on that skull. Do you see that? It's pretty, pretty strange. Tempranza. Here we have two um, little devil minions. They all look inherently male. Two torches. And it looks like they're holding the thing that he's standing on. Bat wings. A torre. Here we have someone who's actually hit the ground and is there's debris on top of them. And the other person's falling but not yet hit. But, I mean, lots of colors. In, in these cards. And the next one actually really shows off all the colors, the blues, the greens, the peach, pink color, very nice, La Stella. And there's the bird. And this is a amazingly wonderful moon card. You know, I always judge a deck by its moon card. I love the face in the moon. It's neither male nor female. We have two dogs, we have two towers, we have the water, we have the path, we have the crab, or the lobster, or the crayfish. I love here it's not in the water, which is kind of different, a hazy moon night. Here's the sun. Instead of children, we have a male and female, man and woman, young, probably not married, probably courting. Beautiful sun breaking through the clouds. Wall. And justice. Here we see some buttocks. We have uh, dollar store Jesus right here. And Miss Moonface right there. Or, but it should be a male archangel. And the world. So here in the parent tarot, here is the world, which looks beautiful, but it's very fuzzy. Here the world is much more defined with the proper animals there. 
And let's go through the minor arcana, the pips. So this deck goes coins, or denari, cups. Bastani and Spad. Spad. One, two, there's no writing on the two. Or the three. Look how lovely the lines are, the coloring. Very neat, very tight artwork. Very beautiful. Even Doti sounds like, you know, Doti, like very tiny. Intricate, tight, doti. Seven. Eight. That's, ooh, the eight's on top of those. That's interesting. Nine. Ten. Very intricate. Here's the Fante de Denari. Lovely colors. The Cavalier, abbreviated to Denari. Lovely horse coloring. He looks like a Mongol, almost. Regina, Regina. And the King, Re. He has a crown there, he has a crown there. Oh, this is a beautiful card, the Ace of Copa. Two, very pretty. Three, four, five. Again, I am really struck by how how nice and the resolution of these cards are very well done. Eight, nine. And 10 with the cup where it should be, right at the top, laying down. Fante de Copa. Cavalier de Copa. Not bearded and aggressive looking. Very soft with the covered cup, and she does look pregnant. Regine de Copa. Big cup, not covered. King. We have the hand, which you no know, muscular, tight, sinewy. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Beautiful, intricate, woven. Fanta de Bastoni. Queen. Young queen and a young king. And this says, oh, Legi Tus Jen. Uh, Fabrica Fratelli Dotti Milano. There's a picture of Mercury with the Cadesis. Not Cadicus, Cadesis. I think this was on the cover of mine, the, the uh, Il Meningello one. I know it had like the red ink, I mean the red wax. So here's the ace. We have these curved scimitar with very nice hilts. Three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, and ten. These are, instead of coming from that, they're coming from the sides. Fante de Spad. Camellia. Queen. King. 
young looking royalty. And that is the deck. So that is the doti, which I got on Etsy from, um, came from Italy, directly from the Renascimento Italian art. Here's the little things, and there's the box. So what I thought I would do is uh, one of my favorite uh, books for poetry that's accessible for children to get them interested in poetry is Reflections on a Gift of Watermelon Pickle and Other Modern Verse. And it's one that I, I really, uh, when I got into poetry, I think it was really a, a it's something they teach in school, at least they did. I am. Stephen Dunning, Edward Luters, and Hugh Smith are the editors. And one of my favorite uh, poets is Edna St. Vincent Millay. I mean, if you know who she is, you know that she's a wonderful person, kind of odd, but beautiful poetry. And um, I'm a fan of hers. I have three or three signed books of hers. Um, she died in 1955, and I I remember the biography I read called Edna is uh, quite good. I think it's called Edna. Anyway, um, so it's called The Counting Out Rhyme, and I've always thought this is really a neat poem. So here goes. Silver bark of beech and sallow, bark of yellow birch and yellow, twig of willow. Stripe of green and moosewood maple, color seen in leaf of apple, bark of popple. Wood of popple pale as moonbeam, Wood of oak for yoke and barn beam, wood of horn beam, silver bark of beech and hollow, stem of elder, tall and yellow, twig of willow. To me, it's almost like a um, like a spell being cast, but it's called the counting out rhyme, and I just thought, oh. So, what did you think of it? Did you like it? kind of reminded me of this book, uh, The Witch's Art of Incantation, Spoken Charms, Spells, and Curses, and Folk Witchcraft by Roger J. Horn. This is a book I recently got. It is, uh, I think it's, is it independently published? Moon Over the Mountain Press, copyright 2021. Um, a lot of these are Irish, Scottish, So here's one. This is actually um, Welsh. It's called A Charm for Love. My sweetheart waits atop the hill, a rose of red, a rose of white. The red rose drops its petals. The white rose is my only, my own true love. It's an incantation. Here's another charm to incite desire. I conjure thee, O moon and stars, light held in my very own hand, by the air within my lungs, and by the soil upon which I stand, and by all the names of the spirits and principalities that bear upon you, in the names of Mercurio, Machael, and Malchiadel, to incite such great desire in the name of the person, that they can feel no indifference towards me, only need. And when this work is finished, depart thou, guardians of the moon and stars, in the names of Melchiadel, Berestes, Zazel, Feral, and Malka, and with my gratitude and love. This is French. Uh, it's from the Grimorium Virum, uh, and its origins 1700s. It's an interesting book. Anyway, there's the Doti Tarot and some words. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching.